Everybody's excited. Why Wednesdays is back. I mean, what a great day to be alive. Malachi Brown, he's got a good block from Wyatt Pelicano. Brown, a first down and more, and out of bounds inside the 20 yard line. Shepard with the well executed swing pass. Oh. Never ordered Chipotle online either. Oh, no, you don't do that. That's a, that is a cardinal sin. You are asking to get ripped off. It's Wyatt Wednesday. It's a great day to be alive here on the Sports Mix. We're now joined on the show by Wyatt Pelicano, Shepard Rams offensive lineman. Wyatt, how are you today? I am absolutely fantastic. That's good to hear. Wasn't Uh, sure if you had anything else to say after that. Nah, nah, there's not really much more to say. You know, what's what's understood doesn't need to be explained. It's Wednesday in Shepardstown. It's my favorite day of the week. I'm sure it's your guys' too. I mean, if it's not your favorite the week, favorite day of the week, then what are you doing? You know, it's it's the middle of the week. It's our last work day on the field. We get to put the pads on one last time before game time. You know, so everybody's locked in. The preparation is real. But yeah, I mean, it, it's just one of those one of those things, man. You know, it's Wednesday in Shepherdstown. Everybody's everybody's excited. Yeah, and speaking of putting the pads on, that was something that you got to do on Saturday was in the game for that win at Edinburgh after your injury kept you on the sideline in week one. Uh, Just talk about what it was like being back out there for you. Yeah, well, I mean, now that it's uh, kind of over with, I, I can I'll, I'll explain uh, like what it was. I had a so the seventh day of camp, I, I had a grade one possible grade two sprain in my MCL. Had to get the MRI and everything. Um, so it was it, they said around three to four weeks. I was probably ready to go in like two and a half. Um, but yeah, I, I was finally back back on the field. It felt great. I felt like I, we, we played a solid game. You know, there's obviously always room for improvements. Um, but as a team, I thought we, we handled adversity once or twice. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it was just, it felt great to be out there moving bodies and setting edges once again. Wyatt, uh, in the game, um, we've talked about before with your injury, you know, Curtis Jefferson comes in, he fills in plays the role for you uh, in the game. Josh Bell goes down. Josh Crummett has to come in and, and play the backup center role. And I think at one point Lucas had to come off the field. Jefferson came in. Just talk about, I guess, the guys behind that starting five and how they progressed from, you know, the spring to now. Yeah. I mean, I've talked about it before. You know, one thing we are in Shepherdstown is deep. You know, I feel like I say that every week on here, but it is the truth, you know, and and, uh, on the front lines, it is it is very much the case. That boy, Josh Crummett, dude's a banger from Oakdale, man. He's a young guy, but he can bang. That dude's been working his butt off all camp. Uh, I think he stepped up and, and the plays that he had, he made the most of. And James fought through his uh, his injury. He came back to um, to help us out. But. I mean, like I said, it doesn't matter if it's me. It doesn't matter if it's James. It doesn't matter if it's Chandler, Brandon Carr, Ty Lucas. We have dudes that can fill the roles, you know. And, and obviously, like you want your you want your ones out there. You want your best guys out there. That's always what you want. But I mean, we got dudes that are prepared to roll. And Curtis is definitely one of those guys. I've said before that dudes that dude can bang. We got a lot of guys that are just really able to lock it down in the middle. And, and it's and it is super super helpful. And to see a, a young guy like Josh Crummett go out there and uh, perform like he did, and not even just he he even was able to make his calls the right way, which as a center is extremely extremely important against a very like kind of ludicrous all over the place Edinburgh defense. So uh, he did a really great job of being composed and calm and collected while also bringing energy and force. Um, but yeah, dude, those guys, those guys can play. All of those dudes can play up front. We we have we have so many dudes that are ready to roll at a moment's notice. I mean, Curtis Jefferson is our Swiss Army knife. That dude can play pretty much anywhere on the O line. If we needed to move, James could do anything on the O line. I can do a whole bunch. Ty Lucas can do pretty much anything on the O line. We got a lot of guys that can play pretty much anywhere. So that is extremely helpful to be that flexible at the position. I think it makes uh, Coach McCook's job a little easier. Certainly makes uh, Seth's life probably a lot easier and I mean yeah but those dudes those dudes can bang Wyatt the first two weeks of the season Shepherds had to go through some adversity very close games a combined eight points in 
the deficit for a 2-0 and record now. Just talk a little bit about, through that adversity, what you guys have learned about yourselves. Yeah, I mean, uh, if it was easy, everybody would do it. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's kind of everybody, uh, I mean, especially after the first game. I mean, people are people think that there's some blood in the water with us. You know, a lot of guys want to – and you can see it on the rankings, man. We all see it. Like, uh, we're, we're 2-0. and Somehow we, we drop in the polls or whatever. And I'm not really big on following it. Um, but – I don't know. Everybody wants to play us as hard as they can. You know, we've been we've been running the show for a long time, yeah, and uh, we're the only West Virginia team that's in the PSAC. It's the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference, and we're not from Pennsylvania. So nobody in, in conference, whether it's in the West or the East, is going to like us, and that's something that we're used to at this point. You know, so everybody from here on out, where, even if it's crossover or not, in, co- in the PSAC, those dudes are going to come out to play us, and we know that. Uh, everybody wants to take a shot at us, and I am. Rightfully so. You know, nobody wants to be beat by somebody that's not even from your state. So I get it. Um, but I mean, we're we're gonna we're gonna see adversity the rest of the season. In my eyes, a win is a win, inch or a mile. So as long as the W's keep coming, I, I, there's not a whole lot to complain about. But obviously, like I said, there's always room to improve. And when we go back and watch the tape, we see the stuff. We're not comfortable with these close games. We want to. We want to put. It, we want to put it on teams. We want to run up the score. Um, we got. We got to find the tools to win. And I mean, the gap is growing, right? And I and I really do. I believe that that Edinburgh team could have probably been a better team than the one we saw week one. So I think the improvements are there, but we got to keep climbing. Why you mentioned everybody in the PSAC coming after Shepard. Obviously, they know how good you guys have been since joining the conference. One thing I wanted to ask, now that you're in conference play and from an offensive line perspective, which D-line in the PSAC has given you guys or you personally the biggest issues? Not necessarily an individual player, but is there a D-line that just whenever you guys go up against them, you know it's going to be a battle. I mean, obviously all the teams in the PSAC are pretty quality teams, but is there one specifically that you just hate going up against because of how good their D-line is? Um, I try to, we try to treat everybody the same, you know, but there's absolutely, I mean, obviously some dudes are going to be better than others. I will say this. Coming up this week with Cal, these guys are no joke, and they like to they they like to move, shift, stem a whole lot on their front. So um, that's always a challenge, and they got some dudes that can make plays. Uh, I think it, it is kind of interesting because in the PSAC you get you get normally like one or two really good edge rushers on a team, maybe a solid nose. IUP obviously has some some big noses uh, typically, and they're they're probably the one that bring the most force. That'll that's normally the best D line we play all year if I had to pick one. But I mean, yeah, like you guys said, man, there's there's threats all over the PSAC. There's no there's not a, there's not gonna be easy games from from here on out. You know, it, 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 like I was saying before, everybody in the PSAC's out to get us and they're gonna play their best week when they see Shepard on the schedule. So and we know that. Uh, but yeah, if I had to pick one I'd say maybe IUP. But we really do try to look at everybody the same and, and not disrespect or give too much respect to anybody we go against. Wyatt, this week against California on the road, a team that was a very tough game last year, I believe one into overtime, actually. You guys were able to get the win, if I'm not mistaken, and now you have to go to their place. They have revenge on their mind. What's practice been like this week for you guys? Because last week with the heat, you had to change some things around this week. The week has really cooled off temperature-wise, so what's it been like? Uh, yeah, everybody's excited. Uh, last, last year, uh, was Jacob Haney's hero game, you know, so he, he saved us last year with a, with a, with a late field goal that won the game for us. Um, the goal is to not to get into that kind of match with these dudes again and try to keep it, keep it, uh, in our control, in our hands, control our own destiny. You never want to have to leave it up to one guy and just, you want, we want to win this thing together. Um, and that's that's the the biggest goal I think for us going in, and that's kind of the, I think we we uh, 
practices have been we're we're competing, you know. And, and yesterday at practice, we even had like people are competing. Dudes are dudes are starting to get hot, get frustrated, and, and that's there's there's good parts of that, you know. You need that kind of energy um, because the people that are either upset with where they are or what, what's going on, those are the dudes that are, that are going to work the hardest, and that makes people hungry. Hungry is always good, you know. There's never a time where where being hungry as an athlete is a bad thing. We need dudes that are that are hungry for reps hungry for to make plays uh all of it you know so that's extremely important i think that's been a that's been a huge emphasis this week is just trying to really find we need dudes to just step up and make the plays you know i think that's really been our defense has been hitting hard on that offensively though it's it's the same thing you know we got we got a lot of talent but we gotta we gotta enforce some discipline you know we put the ball on the ground a couple times last week that's a big no-no for us you know you gotta we gotta protect that better um and that's all the way down the line. You know, that's, that's, you, can't, you can't pinpoint any one guy. Um, but we got to be better at that. And the defense, I think they're, they're making a huge emphasis on trying to, to really step up and put their foot down. I think they're, they were upset with how the ball was ran on them last week, which, I mean, makes sense as well. So, so those are, I think, the big points of emphasis for us this week. But, yeah, practices, we're, we're, we're getting after it right now. No doubt about it. Kind of a similar question to my last one, Wyatt, except I'm going to ask about your own team. I can remember Dwayne Grantham always talking about how Ronnie Brown would push him to do better in practice. Is there anybody, or who is the guy, I guess, for you that, you know, always is pushing you in practice on the defensive side? Oh, man, there's, there's, uh, I could sit here and give you a whole list, you know, because, like, as a lineman, like, like, Dwayne and Ronnie, it's like when, when it comes, comes past time, like you'll probably get a linebacker over the running back, so it's typically Dwayne, you know, so this so they get to to have real head to head uh encounters. But as a lineman, you know, I'm blocking different people kinda every play because the defense is gonna shift to what they want. They're gonna try to take matchups on us and everything in between. But I will say, uh I think Jack Baxter is, is always a huge challenge for us in practice and he's very good about you know like that dude doesn't take reps off. You know, and that's that's extremely important is, in practice is you get dudes a lot of times when dudes you either get a starting spot or or start to play good, you know, they'll start to relax on you a little bit. That is not Jack Baxter. That's not in his vocabulary. So that dude definitely pushes us super hard. Nathan Muley is always a, is always a challenge and is pushing us hard. Matt Bednarski is a freaking grinder. That dude is always pushing us hard. Um, I mean, Weezy, even that linebacker, you know, when we get our chance, when he comes down, like he, he's going to keep us on our toes, especially me, you know, so uh, – there, there, I could sit here all day and name different situations. But, yeah, I think if I had to, I'd say the top three were probably uh, Baxter, Bednarski, and Muley of just they're, they're constantly, we're pushing each other, you know, and it makes everybody better. Like they're trying out new moves. I'm showing them how I'm going to stop them and everything in between. So, uh, but, yeah, those are definitely the guys that keep, keep, keep this thing pushing everybody getting better. Wyatt, I want to go back to last week just for a quick second and, we finally got to see Seth Morgan really hit his stride at a fantastic game, over 400 passing yards. And then Cam Dorner, also an explosive day, 10 catches, over 200 yards. Just talk a little bit about them. Yeah, man. You know, it's, it's always exciting to see dudes get their flowers. And uh, I, I, I've been saying the whole time, you know, I know a lot of uh, – there's been some, I guess, some fans or, or whatever that were not satisfied with, uh, with Seth's play the first week. Um, I think I think that dude is is doing the best he can. I think he's working hard, and I mean, look, we saw it. He can be successful. Cam Dorner can be having him back. It, it's like we're good, you know. What I mean, we have we have the weapons. They're there, and it was so cool to see them get their uh, flowers and their recognition and, and ball out. The execution was done. You know, I mean, Cam Dorner ten receptions for two hundred yards. That's I mean, that is crazy numbers. Like there is no, there's no way around it. That is that is crazy numbers for a wide receiver to, to put up 200 yards. So, uh, and I mean, what a wild way to do it too. A couple highlight catches, um, some big plays. So, I mean, yeah, those dudes, those dudes can play ball. And there's nothing that it, it, it is so comforting as an offensive lineman when, especially like our offensive line, when when the whole speculation is, oh, Tyson Bajan's gone, the passing game is gone. It's not gone. This dude can sling the rock. He can sling the rock well. Cam Dorner can catch it. Cordell Batten can catch it. We got dudes that can play ball, you know, and having Malachi be a dual threat, 
he can run it or he can go with those swing passes, those screens. I mean, we can see him. He, he can get loose. We already knew that, you know. So uh, it, it's so comforting, and it, and it is, it's awesome to watch as a teammate to see these dudes ball out and shine and, and, and get the recognition they deserve because, I mean, Cam Dorner is a dangerous receiver. Seth Morgan is a dangerous quarterback. Malachi Brown is a dangerous running back. All our, I have so much faith in our entire, like, receiving core and tight ends. Like, all those dudes are ballers. They can play. So, when we get this thing and everybody's finally in sync, because I still don't believe that we've clicked the way we should yet. But when we, when we all get it going and it clicks, I don't think that there's going to be a team in Division Two that can stop us. Why, when you guys are preparing for an opponent, is there ever a time where you guys get with the D-line and, and try to replicate some of the things that the O-line will try to do to them, and do they try to do the same to you when you're, I guess, preparing for a team like Cal and different looks that they might give on the defensive side? Oh, absolutely. That's almost, uh, that's almost a, entirely what, um, what our practices are. Uh, in the middle of the week is having them replicate looks that we're going to see and vice versa. Um, and, and obviously that's extremely important because especially like a week like this week, Cal runs, a, like I said, they stem a lot. They move a lot. They're trying to throw us off. They're, they're giving us a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, so it's extremely important for us to get comfortable seeing it. You know what I mean? As a lineman, when you get, when you get those dudes that shift and move, you got to, one, it's you got to make sure that you're locked in on Seth's cadence. So if they say something, they don't draw us off sides without actually uh, replicating the snap count because then that's still on us. You know, so it's stuff like that we got to get comfortable with. Um, everything in between, though, you know, it, it, they're going to give us different fronts than our defense would. So we got to see those fronts because that's what we're going to block on Saturday. We're not going to be playing against our guys on Saturday. It's going to be their guys. So. Uh, yeah, both both sides of it. We definitely do both of those things. So I think that that's extremely important. It is doing the best we can to not just throw a bunch of like freshmen and dudes out there to to run scout and have us bully them, but uh, to have athletic dudes that go out there play their freaking butts off uh, on scout team and and give us the best look possible. Which I think we have. We have. I mean, even. Yesterday at practice on scout, that was when things started to heat up, when our scout team offense was going against our starting defense. And it's like, when if our scout team offense makes any sort of a play, we're going crazy. We're, 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 they're celebrating. They're having fun, which they should, because that fuels and it shows the defense, well, hey, like, look, if this happens on Saturday, this is what's going to happen. Those dudes are going to celebrate. They're going to be, you know what I mean? So if you don't want that to happen then you gotta you got to put the foot down. And it's not just our defense. You know, it goes both ways. When the, when the scout D makes a crazy stop, they go crazy celebrating on us, yelling at me, yelling at all the, like, Seth, all the offensive leaders trying to draw us off. And that's good. That's important because that's, like, that's how it is when the bullets are flying. So, yeah, but I, I, that is, I mean, that's a key to success right there is, is trying to replicate not just the looks but the energy on scout. All right, Wyatt, we're getting short on time, but before we let you go, uh, for those that might not know, you're a New York Giants fan. I wanted to get your thoughts about <laughs> what happened to your New York Giants oh. on Sunday night, man. Yeah, you know, I was actually really hoping that I wasn't going to get this question, but it's okay. I've mentally prepared for it. Uh, I, have full, I have full confidence in Brian Dable. I had full confidence in Daniel Jones. It's kind of shaken. Um, but I, I will say what I what I am absolutely disgusted with is the stat line for the offensive line from that game. Uh, I had it up. Uh, me and James Bell were looking at it the other day in the training room. I mean, it was like left tackle, our, our first-round pick left tackle from like a year or two ago uh, from Georgia he was like two pressures in a in a sack, I think, and then it was like our left guard was like three pressures, and then our center was three pressures, and then this is where it gets ugly. Our right guard was like nine pressures and three sacks, which is like that's a season's worth amount of pressures and sacks for me. Like, and I get that I'm not saying that I could do better. I'm just saying that that's like what a like a decent above average guard should not be giving up even close to that. Like in a season, that's like acceptable numbers. So the fact that they were doing that in the game is crazy. 
Uh, and then the, the right tackle was in the same boat. He had like eight pressures and a sack. So, I mean, that is just, as an offensive lineman, that makes me want to throw up all over the place. Um, it was it was hard to watch, you know, and you can't, without a, everything starts up front. And anybody that ever wants to say offensive line isn't important, go and watch, rewatch that game and tell me that because, oh, my goodness, if I was Daniel Jones, I would have been shaking in my boots trying to catch those snaps. I mean, that was terrible, terrible, terrible. Yeah, but that said, I don't think that it's over. I don't think that we're dead in the water. The good news about it is it's not like next week we have to start down 40 points. It's over. It's done. Put it, put it in a bed and send it away. Forget about it because we got another week this week. Uh, that's just, I mean, if I'm, the, if I'm Brian Dable, that's what I'm telling him. You know, obviously you got to correct the mistakes. You look at the film, you find out exactly what went wrong. And, and correct those mistakes, but it's, you gotta you gotta have a short term memory. You, you can't let Dallas beat you twice. Uh, but man, yeah, that was that was rough to watch. Oh my goodness, was that rough to watch? Well, at least you got the Cardinals this week. <laughs> yeah, seriously, should be a nice tune up game. If we lose this week, I might need to consider buying a Ravens jersey or something. <laughs> Get a Joey Fisher Steelers jersey. I, honestly, that would probably be my next purchase. I mean, I, I don't even know what I'm talking about. I, at this point, I'm bear down, baby. Go Tyson. Because, yeah. I mean, it feels looks all right, but I want to see 17 spin the rock. And that was the other thing I said is I was like, dude, like some of the plays, like with the protection was there, Daniel Jones was making bad choices. Sign my man TB. So, like, he, he, I think he could be the guy. I think that he could be – dude, I, I honestly believe after watching him preseason – like, I just think that he's more composed than some of these dudes that are starting in the NFL right now. So, uh, and uh, obviously that's my good man. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say whatever I have to to, to gas him up. But, yeah, I, it's rough. It's rough. So they better turn it around against Arizona this week or there's going to be a, some, some questions and decisions to make. All right, Wyatt, we got to let you go. We're short on time. Got to get to our break. Appreciate it and talk to you next week. Yes, sir. I appreciate you.